This is Gary Atencio with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. We're here at the Hard Rock Cafe. I am here with Kevin Kern, who is the Director of Public Relations for none other than Graceland. The year is 2014. We are celebrating 60 years of really a truck driver who walked into Sun Recording Studios and made history for everyone. First of all, Kevin, I imagine it's any year is exciting to be part of this organization for you, but even more so today. Tell me what's going on here. Right, uh, we're celebrating 60 years of Elvis and rock and roll. It was July 5th, 1954, that Elvis walked into Sun Studio and recorded That's All Right, and many music historians consider that the shot heard around the world in terms of a music revolution and the beginning of rock and roll for the masses, and it happened in Memphis, Tennessee, and that's the, the place that Elvis called home, and that's where Graceland is, uh, and Graceland is the rock and roll destination, a pilgrimage of sorts for music and history enthusiasts, and so we've got a brand new exhibit that celebrates 60 years of Elvis and rock and roll at Graceland, and we brought a few of the King's treasures here to Denver today. Why don't we go into that a little bit? Start off, um, first of all, I see, I see what looks like a script in front of me here. Right. What do we have? Uh, we have Elvis's script from uh, Jailhouse Rock at the time that Elvis was provided this copy. It says, Untitled Presley Story. So the movie didn't have a title at that point. It was, uh, and eventually became known as Jailhouse Rock uh, based on the uh, featured song, Jailhouse Rock. One of the reasons why this, uh, this artifact uh, is in the exhibit because we're talking about Elvis's place in pop culture history and Jailhouse Rock. Um, that song performance with the dance is considered one of the world's first music videos. And so um, Elvis shaking his hips doing the Jailhouse Rock with the other inmates is truly an iconic uh, number in there. We also have Elvis's um, 45 of That's All Right, his uh, first record on the Sun Record label. We have his personal copy of that record. And then sitting next to it is, is before Elvis became a household name, and that those are his pay stubs from Crown Electric, uh, where he was a delivery truck driver and uh, earned $1 an hour and $1.50 an hour for overtime and uh, tax donation or contributions, two thirty-two, two $2.32. So um, times have changed, but uh, it's really interesting to see a side of Elvis before he was known as the king of rock and roll. Absolutely. We're talking about $30 a week there. I see on a pay stub, quite amazing. Although he was one to really give back um, to the world, not only in music, but in contribution as well. Right. Elvis was very philanthropic. He supported a variety of causes um, from the March of Dimes to uh, children's uh, homes to uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. Elvis supported a lot of uh, charities and uh, he grew up very poor and not having things. And so uh, he was certainly uh, uh, keen to give back where he could, and his legacy lives on today through the Elvis Presley Charitable Foundation. Quite a contrast what he's got here compared to 1957. He puts out this movie, like Hal Wallace, the producer said, there's always one sure thing you can count on, and that's an Elvis Presley movie to be successful. I see some uh, dashing red over there. What do we have? We do. We have some dashing red. Um, Elvis wore this um, in one of the scenes in Viva Las Vegas. There's a scene where Elvis is singing uh, and comes through a set of... Uh, uh, of almost saloon doors, faux saloon doors, and he's wearing this red shirt. And uh, it's truly an iconic piece of wardrobe. Uh, occasionally Elvis would take home things uh, from the movie set. He'd buy them from the studio, and this is one piece that he did. We also have, uh, you know, the red MG from Blue Hawaii. That's one thing that he really liked and, and wanted after the filming of the movie. So, um, uh, you know, this is truly an iconic piece. and, and, and part of the exhibit because Viva Las Vegas uh, was, was a truly a mainstream hit both in the theaters uh, and in terms of the soundtrack record sales. Nice dashing red. Quite honestly, the man could look good in anything. I imagine females, males can agree on that and also would look good next to a redhead, be it um, one of the female leads. Yeah, and Margaret and Elvis, of course, uh, uh, danced quite a bit in this film and, and, and made lots of uh, music, uh, music and movie history in that film. Like we mentioned before, obviously, to visit Graceland, one of the most visited homes, I imagine, right there next to the White House. Is that still so? Yeah, uh, Graceland uh, re remains one of the most iconic homes in America and, and second most famous home uh, in, the, in the country after the White House. Uh, there are a variety of historic home tours, and Graceland ranks right up there with the Biltmore and Monticello and Mount Vernon. Uh, but we're a unique historic home tour. We're not uh, a home uh, to a presidential or a political figure. We're home to the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, in the center of the country. And we average around 600,000 visitors from all over the globe. Uh, we offer our tour in nine languages. Uh, 
uh, closed captioning for the hearing impaired as well. So it's a great experience for the entire family because it's uh, you don't have to be an Elvis fan to visit Grace and enjoy it. Yeah, it really just an interest in, in music or history um, or even cars because Elvis had uh, a variety of motorized vehicles and we have over 25 plus in our car museum. So a lot to see and do uh, at Graceland in Memphis, uh, the best barbecue on both sides of the Mississippi. Wonderful. I mean, so obviously if we have viewers out there who have never visited Graceland, this would be a great year to do so because quite honestly, 60 years we're celebrating. He walked into Sun Recording Studios and really changed history for the music industry. Check out the website at the bottom of the screen right there. That is Elvis.com. You can also sign up to their newsletter. They'll keep you apprised of everything going on, a lot of the news out there. As you know, Elvis can be seen anywhere. I know I visited Graceland many years ago, and like you said, it's, it's, it's a really a magical place to go to when those gates open up, and basically you can hear in your head, welcome to my world, you know you're in the king's home, and the king is in the building. This is Gary Atencia with CNTV, and if you don't know, now you know.